Let's subtract real numbers. First, I'd like to explain to you why it is that when we do a subtraction problem with real numbers, that we add the opposite and then follow the rules for addition. That is what you do, though. We all know that 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. And with the logic and what we've been doing with adding real numbers, we also know that if we took a positive 2 and added a negative 2 to that, we'd also get 0. And this is kind of the premise of why whenever we have a subtraction problem, please notice that it's the same thing as an adding the opposite value. So I can take any subtraction problem and change it to an addition problem and change the sign of the number following. I'll be saying that I swipe, swipe. I use my pencil once to change the subtraction symbol to an addition symbol, and I change the sign of the number following. Let's do a few problems. And then I, I do follow the rules for addition. So if I have 3 and I want to take away 8, first of all, I imagine that in this problem you might understand that you're going to go into debt. Let's say we were talking about money. Let's say you had $3 and you took away 8. You're going to be $5 in debt. But what we're going to say that whenever we have a subtraction problem, we add the opposite two swipes of my pencil, and then I follow the rules for addition. Um, again, addition. These two numbers have different signs. One is positive, one is negative. The 8 has more pull. I know that my answer is going to be negative because of the sign in front of the 8. I take their absolute values, the 8 and the 3, and I subtract them, and I get 5, making sure again that my sign with the more the greatest pull is in front of my answer. Let's do another. I think I'll leave that one there. Let's take a negative 15 and subtract a negative 8. So again, remember to read this correctly. A negative 15 minus a negative 8. So whenever I subtract, you don't have to use your pencil every time if you can do this mentally, but when I subtract a negative, I add a positive. Two swipes of my pencil, one to change this to an addition problem, one to change the sign of the value following. Now I follow the rules for addition because they have unlike signs. I'm going to subtract their absolute values. 15 minus 8 is 7. The 15 has more pull, so my answer will be negative. Let's do another one. So I have 9 minus a negative 3. This is like having $9 and somebody takes away $3 of debt that you had. You're kind of better off in that problem. You're further ahead than that $9. But mathematically what we say is let's add the opposite. These two values have the same sign. Matter of fact, this is arithmetic as we know it all our lives. They are both positive numbers. We add their absolute values. And we give the sign of our answer the common sign, which is positive, which we typically don't write down. Let's do one more. A negative 7 minus 12. So, again, a negative 7, this is a subtraction symbol. Subtract a positive 12, so I'm going to add a negative 12. And then because these two values have like signs, I will add their absolute value, that is 19, and I'll give my answer the common sign that they share, which is a negative sign. Let's now do a problem with fractions and signs. A negative 5 eighths minus 3 fourths. These two fractions have a common denominator of 8. All that is required of me is to make that 4 become an 8 by multiplying it by 2, and in other words, 2 over 2, or a value of 1. So this 3 times 2 in that numerator will be a 6, and the 4 times 2 in the denominator is 8. Again, remember that 6 eighths is an equivalent fraction to 3 fourths. Whatever you do, don't go back and reduce it. You need it to make it look like this so that these two fractions would have a common denominator. And now you just want to take this first fraction, which has a negative 5 in the numerator. The sign is um, best thought of with the numerator because I have to subtract these two or add the opposite because it's a subtraction problem. Because their signs are alike, I'm going to add their absolute values, 
6 and 5 add to be 11. They share a common sign that is negative over the common denominator of 8. Finally, if we have a subtraction problem and um, it has several terms in it, I would highly encourage that you work from left to right, especially if it's got some addition and subtraction. Let's work this one from left to right. So first, let's go ahead and take this positive 39 and this negative 88 and add them. So they have opposite signs. So I have to subtract their absolute values. This one has more pull. So my answer is going to be a negative, and it looks like it's going to be a negative 49. Then let's subtract this 29 that comes next, and then finally we'll subtract that negative 83. And let's remember that when we subtract 29, we add the opposite. So these two now have like signs, so I should add their absolute values. and then give the common sign that they share. So 49 and 29 add to be 78. They have, they're both negative signs, so I apply that common sign. Let's just copy down the rest of the problem. And now finally, we're gonna subtract a negative 83, which means I need to add the opposite, two swipes of my pencil. One of these numbers is negative, one of them is positive. So I have to subtract their absolute values because I'm adding right now. And 83 minus 78 is a positive 5. And because this one, the 83, has more pull over the 78, my answer is positive. You do not have to write that plus sign. You typically do not write that plus sign. So I want, you to, I want to exaggerate the fact that that's equal to a positive 5. Whenever you subtract um, real numbers, would you be sure to think and or to show the strokes of adding the opposite and then follow the rules for addition?